Whoa, earthquake. Did you feel that? Anyway, um, what we can do is we can actually use earthquakes as a way of sensing and actually detecting what's actually inside the earth. So this is the earth here at the moment. And because the radius is about 6,400 kilometers, even if we dig a really, really deep hole, imagine we dug 50 kilometers into the outer crust, we'd still be nowhere near the center of the earth. So how do we know what's actually inside it? Well, we do that by detecting earthquakes and then actually using the data that we receive, analyzing it to actually work out the structure of the earth. So the earth itself, we've got this outer crust that's then surrounding this kind of relatively thick mantle. And then in the middle, when we have the Earth's core, we have this liquid outer core and also the inner core as well. So that's basically what's inside the Earth. And the reason we know that isn't because we've actually seen it, but because of the way that we've picked up different waves from earthquakes. So imagine there was an earthquake uh, maybe around uh, Italy here. So maybe there's an earthquake, uh, the epicentre is down here. Well, we're going to start to detect it as waves are radiated from that point. And the reason that we have an earthquake is just because different parts of the Earth, because it's still moving, they're kind of slipping past each other. They're kind of, there's a lot of pressure, there's a high force which is there, and occasionally the two plates move apart. When that happens, an earthquake is set off. Now, maybe we're based somewhere up here. The first thing we're going to detect are some waves which are called primary waves. They're called primary waves because they're the first ones that we detect. Now, primary waves are longitudinal, and that means the particles are going to be moving back and forwards in the direction of that energy transfer. So we're going to be detecting waves that travel across the surface, and we're still going to be detecting these waves, you know, even a long, long way away from where the earthquake happened. They're going to be very faint, but we can detect them. So sometimes the waves are going to be traveling along the surface, and sometimes they're going to be going through the mantle to get from one place to the other. In actual fact, even on the other side of the world, we can still detect these primary waves because they actually travel all the way through the Earth. Now, a short time later, we detect more waves called secondary waves or S waves, and these ones are actually transverse. And effectively, there's particles which are vibrating at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. But the thing is about transverse waves is that they can't travel through a liquid. In a liquid, with a longitudinal wave, all that's happening is the particles are oscillating backwards and forwards, they pass on the vibrations. But uh, if the particles are moving up and down, they don't pass this up and down motion onto the particles next to them, and that means the transverse wave won't go through any liquid. And actually what we find on the other side of the world to wherever the earthquake was, there's a bit of a sort of um, a zone here where we don't get any S waves detected at all because they can't travel through the molten outer core of the Earth. And that's how we know there's this liquid centre to the Earth. The other thing that these waves do is as they're going through this, um, the kind of the inner parts of the Earth, they're actually refracting, and that means they're changing direction as they're going from material which is maybe one density to another. So they're not all travelling straight lines, they maybe sort of bend around in different shapes. And actually as we start to build up a whole picture from maybe where the central earthquake was, we build up a whole picture of these S waves arriving at different points. And what we can then do with some kind of clever mathematics, some clever computers, is we can actually start to analyse all the data and actually build up a 3D image of what's inside the Earth. So that's how we know what's inside the Earth. It's because of these seismic waves which are given out in earthquakes and how we can detect the primary waves first, which are longitudinal, followed up by the secondary waves, the S waves, which are the transverse waves.